we've finally broken the first barrier of contact, guys. You know, they've been putting this off over and over and over, but I feel like Axie Explained finally asked those hard questions that needed to be asked. Obviously, he didn't really follow up with the questions because he was being a bit biased, as, you know, everybody is. If you're for the game, if you're not for the game, or if you're for the game but you want to use logical sense, then, you know, I understand, you know, you have to cater because your fan base or, you know, your stance on the game is different and you believe in the long-term vision. It does not matter, guys, okay? Thank you for covering it. You know, Zayori, thank you for coming on to actually explain and actually answering that question specifically. So cool. Let's get right into it. So first things first, we're going to go case by case here and point by point. First thing is that they were mentioning that I was a bit dramatic. I, I feel like I'm, I'm one of the least dramatic people out there. I, I mean, I don't know, guys, but <laughs> I think I'm just going to skip over that point. So second point. So he was talking about, oh, you know, you're a little flimsy. If you're selling your axes, you have to think about your fan base and everybody that represents you that subscribe to you for Axie Infinity content. So this is a bit of an interesting one. And the conundrum really relies on, you know, your POV changes over time. And for you to say that people do not change or mindsets do not change, a bit falsified. I mean, selling your axes should be seen as kind of a form of boycott, really. I mean, I don't hate the game and I feel like there is definitely long-term bullish potential for it. And I'm always in the mindset that, hey, I mean, like, if they fix the SLP issues and, I mean, they're working on it, I know, I'm well aware they're working on it. So, I mean, when you're saying, hey, I mean, there's an underlying message of don't trust the devs, I mean, you guys are trying. You're, you're really alluding to it and you're really trying to push that narrative forward, it seems. But, I mean, like, guys, don't forget the fact that we were just looking for transparency, okay? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm sorry here, but, I mean... I don't have to make five videos just talking about transparency and have nobody get it. And, I mean, unfortunately, my compatriot just, just gets blocked, right? I mean, I'm not blocked, which, I mean, is great. I'm, I'm seeing that they're still open to dialogue, I think. So, next point. Scholars were taken care of and paid. Now, scholars were taken care of and paid. I mean, the people that keep saying that our scholars aren't being taken care of and we just ditched them. And the fact that my brother has scholars means that all of a sudden... I have scholars, so, you know, you must just be still playing the game. No, that, that's not how that works, guys. Just because I support a game, but I don't feel like playing a game anymore, but I have my brother playing it, does not mean that all of a sudden I'm still playing Axie Infinity. I mean, if a lot of these issues get fixed, and by a lot, I really only mean a minute amount. I mean, it's just the freedom of information, right? <laughs> the freedom of transparency, the freedom of blockchain gaming, and a lot of the things that, I mean, they've been a long time coming. Just because, this is another point here, just because I've been playing for three months does not mean I don't have, I mean, over decades worth of gaming experience. I mean, I understand, you know, like, hey, you don't know the complexities of this. You're being very reductionist. When I saw this, it kind of hit a little hard because, I mean, to me, it feels like, I don't know, you're, you're kind of putting me down on the pedestal when in reality, I mean, like, we should be compared evenly if we're trying to be rational and fair. I mean, yes, you know, I have been an Axie for about three months. Does not mean that I don't understand the scope of everything. Does not mean I don't understand the scope of the tokenomics of the game. I mean, you're being a little ignorant. I mean, you, you have no idea, right? You have zero clue. I mean, the, the tokenomics for SLP is very basic, but has nothing to do with the conquest of transparency. You know, it's glaring red flags to you, but to me, it's just honesty. It's put forth and... Well, you guys think we're just kind of grinding content away. I mean, trust me, I would be more than happy to grind out positive Axie news every day if, you know, that was possible for me. I mean, not only that, but I would also more than be happy to just cover anything I want. And I mean, you guys have been seeing it with my new content and my new content isn't going to stop, right? My new content's going to continue to be sporadic and, you know, what I feel because that's what people like. People like when you can see that you have passion for what you're doing, when you just lead things to fruition, when you don't just run away from your problems and you seek, you just seek, you know, answers, guys. This is lack of transparency, and I understand you cannot please everybody. And I'm going to keep saying that word because I want this video to be the video that really gets through your head here. You, you got no perspective of what I now know about Axie Infinity. Now, I'm not saying that this has changed my mind on Axie Infinity necessarily, but, I mean, people change. I mean, 
when I started Axie Infinity three months ago, I knew nothing about the game. I literally, I invested in the game. I'm going to be honest with you guys because I feel like it's honest. In June 24th, I invested in the game. It was my brother's birthday. And I bought three Axies, right? I bought these three Axies and I named them after my siblings. And, it, you know, it was this really fun thing. So, I mean, we were just playing the game, whatever. I showed him the earning potential and how fun it is. It actually was a pretty fun game. I mean, it's a card game. Obviously, you know, over time it might get a little boring. But that's just because I don't like card games. So afterward, around like July, I think, I mean, Crypto King got in there and then the game started blowing up. So, I mean, we started getting into breeding and we made a lot of money. I mean, like breeding was nice for us. But I mean, you know, after the SLP decline, I think it was like 25 cents, guys. We decided to sell out. I pulled out a lot of the cash, put it into other projects, which I mean, they're doing pretty damn well. So, I mean... Is there anything bad about that? No, it's called diversifying your assets. <laughs> That's all that is. And of course, I left some money into Axie Infinity because I had so much appreciation for the game that just kept giving. Now, you know, when everything kind of transpired afterwards and I became a content creator, I became a lot more aware of kind of the downfalls of a community based off of crypto. And that's kind of in the sense of there's a lot of anonymity. There's a lot of a polarist mentality there's a lot of ra radicalism people are very like either very left-sided or right-sided you know i'm trying to be very like moderate in my approach here being moderate is important because you get to take both sides of the equation you know i'm not against the game and i'm not completely for the game because i believe that axie infinity is one of those games that you know shaped the play to earn space now even if you guys hate axie infinity even if you guys think it's a ponzi scheme even if you guys think it's the worst thing to come to your life what i have to say to you is i mean axie infinity has had an impact to the NFT play to earn space. I mean, without CryptoKitties, of course, you know, Axie Infinity probably wouldn't happen. But with Axie Infinity, now we're having these beautiful games like Illuvium, Star Atlas, Guild of Guardians. We've got Crypto Raiders here. We've got a bunch of games coming out, guys. And these are some great games. And it gets me really excited. And when I made, you know, Classy Axie, which was my original name, I mean, I was, co I was planning on covering, you know, Axie Infinity content for five plus years. And I mean, like... Does it have to change? You know what I mean? Like if we be if I come to a resolution with this issue and I feel very comfortable with Axie Infinity in its state, 100% I would hop back in. You know, it's not like I hate this game and I want SLP to go to one cent and I want everybody to lose all of their money and I hope that you guys just... No, no guys. I, I want the best for the game. And I hope that your investments go to the moon. I hope that because I left... SLP goes to like 50 cents and you guys are all just <laughs> in your Lambos guys This is the goal here The goal is for everybody to have success in the NFT space And that's the beauty of it because I guarantee if Axie Infinity becomes a successful game I mean like every other game is going to become semi-successful as well as a ride of the hype Or even if you know Axie Infinity isn't successful I mean other NFT play to earn games can give more spotlight to the space which is so small right now guys The scale of it you guys keep forgetting these things, and I feel like I have to keep reiterating these things over and over and over so you guys can kind of get the point here. I mean, I'm not trying to be biased or anything. That's the goal with Classy. I mean, you can see other channels. You can see whatever you want, but I mean, when you see my videos, you should see it from a perspective of somebody who's just trying to give their thoughts on things, right? Somebody who, you know, has a lot of years in gaming, somebody who has worked in finance, somebody who's, I mean, I've been a consultant. Guys, this is just my honesty, right? <laughs> and if you're going to bash me for it, I mean, go for it, right? I'm, I'm pretty hard and trust me. All right, so communication's better. They said that communication could be better. I agree. I mean, like, of course, thank you for addressing it. However, they said, you know, I don't know if we can do Battles V2. Uh, maybe we could do it, but, you know, it could cause some... Guys, you're missing the point. The, the point isn't for you to go and go to hot butt, get a picture of your new hot butt card art, and then go ahead, plop it in there with the new updated, you know, attack and shield and a new ability. That's not what I want, okay? Now, if you have something really fascinating, like maybe, I don't know, a new body part that, for whatever reason, has a specific card effect for maybe a new secret class... Or maybe it could be something alluding to, I don't know, a beast card. If we can't breed it, we can anticipate it, but we have no idea how to plan for it. And, I mean, if there's none in circulation, I mean, I don't know how that would work. 
But I mean, you could even do things just as, you know, taking a selfie in the workspace. Hey, guys, we're working really hard. Or something like, oh, I'm going to make a puzzle for this little card. Or, you know, something like, hey, we're going to make a puzzle on the new Axie art or a new Axie boss. Guys, just get somebody in your community, man. And I think you did a great job, Sayori, of, you know, addressing the points. You did a great job. When I commented on the video, I was like, okay. You know, I mean, like, from a PR perspective, this is incredible. If you guys are looking for a head of PR, <laughs> you should hire Zayori instantly, guys. Promote him. Hurry up. <laughs> he did a great job. But, I mean, it was a bit condescending, guys. We're just trying to, you know, voice our opinions. And I understand, I mean, you don't have to agree with them. But addressing them like you did in your video, that's a step in the right direction. Constructive criticism, I mean, it gets you somewhere, right? I mean, we wouldn't be anywhere in the human civilization if we didn't listen to criticism. Criticism, I mean, sometimes it's negative, right? But a lot of the times it really helps you build on what you already have. And I think a lot of content creators agree. Just a lot of them in public don't like to say it. I mean, like, I've, I've had a few conversations with some people and, I mean... Guys, th the point is clear. We don't want anything but good for the game. It's an underlying message of distrust, but that's not true, man. I mean, I know this team can deliver. I'm well aware, and I don't want exact ETAs because I understand market manipulation, okay? I understand that that can happen. I understand that there's bias on things. I understand that, you know, SLP at some point can hit 15 cents. I'm not oblivious, okay? At 20 cents when the game was booming or when it hit 30 or 40, whatever... We were oblivious because we were, you know, retail investors. We didn't really look a lot into the game. But now, you know, as I've become a content creator, this is a point that, that was brought where they were saying, oh, hey, you know, the SLP price went down. So now is when you're talking about it. But you weren't talking about it when it first came out. I was completely oblivious. I didn't know anything about any of the things that were coming up. I didn't know anything about the transparency issues. I didn't know anything about anything. And I'm pretty sure a lot of the guys that have brought it up now also had zero clue that these things were going on. I mean, that YGG scandal, I mean... I don't want to say anything on that because I don't think there's circumstantial evidence on that. But I mean, like, it's just more and more things being brought up to question because I feel like we deserve answers. And even if that doesn't lead to anything, which I probably think it won't lead to anything because it doesn't look like it's anything crazy or I don't know. It's, it's a lot of half truths, but we got to focus on what's important. And what's important is just talking to your community, man, in a way that isn't just only positive about things. I understand, I mean, you don't have a PR team, but it's just like being honest with what's with some of the things that are going on in your company. I, I don't know what's going on. I understand you guys are all quarantined and I understand that at the end of the day, I'm not a game developer, so I would have zero clue to anything. Come on, guys. <laughs> I'm not here to kill you guys. So something else that was brought up was that uh, YouTube channels such as mine are like cults where they're trying to go ahead and be like, hey guys, the times are going to end. SLP is dying. These videos get a lot of clicks. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> guys, if I wanted to get content, I would just make clickbait content, okay? Trust me. If, if I wanted views, clickbait every video. But what I do here in Classy, we make the real video. We suit up, guys. You guys are the, the distinguished gentlemen. My subscribers. That's what you guys are going to be named. The Distinguished Gentleman. Okay? We suit up. We talk rationally. We talk about facts. And that's it. I mean, if you don't like the title, you're not going to like the video. Because that's exactly what I talk about. I mean, it's it's really just a reductionist take. That, that's all it really is. It's just... It's putting us down in a level where you think we don't understand what's going on. In a level where just because we were in the game for three months... And I'm sorry, but I spent a lot of time. I spent hundreds of thousands of hours researching regarding this game when I played Axie Infinity. Trust me, I put in the time. Now, just because I don't know about transparency or a lot of the issues arising now... Does not mean that I hate the game does not mean that my mindset is completely changed on the right side where I just hate everything and I hope this goes downhill. I just wanted to clarify that statement, but I still think that a lot of these questions regarding lack of transparency and the fact that, I mean, the game is still an alpha, but I mean, we're three years down the line and the fact that I understand, you know, you're the whole HR department debacle. You've had a lot of time to hire HR, right? But your Series A funding, I mean, that came a while back. Uh, I mean, I have no idea how to run a gaming company, so I don't want to mention any of those things, right? <laughs> but, I mean, it's just, there's a lot of unanswered questions. I mean, the whole, like, uh, Riot Games thing. I'm not expecting you to be Riot Games, guys. It's not hard to do leaks, guys. It's It really isn't that hard. I mean, just to see some guy drawing something. Here, I'll, I'll do it for you. I don't know. Like, uh, let me get my ledger here. 
So, uh, guys, here's a uh, here's some snippet, guys. I'm working hard on this thing, or you know, I'm drawing it. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like I have to represent it over here. <laughs> you guys aren't understanding. Guys, don't be afraid of me. I'm not here to kill your game. So please, if you want to talk to me, you don't even have to do it on video. You could just talk to me in the DMs, guys. I don't care about the whole video thing. If you want to talk to me, get some things clear. And I mean, like, if you want me to talk about it, sure. And that's going to be pretty much it for any content creators that want any further questions. You know, I saw Hunter TV commented on my last video. So thank you for doing that. And thank you for starting dialogue in my comment section. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching this video, guys. Classy out. Stay safe and stay classy. I always forget that.